The next one is commitment. Goals are effective if employees agree to the goals. Agreement uh, results in employees being fully committed to the goal. So the employees must have commitment. They must apply themselves and they must try to achieve the goal. There must be commitment and the employer must find ways of getting commitment from the employees. Now, it can be done in various ways. Um, it could be done by offering bonuses or higher wage or the opportunity for promotion or recognition within the business as an important employee or employee of the month or whatever it is. But goals need to be um, the goals need to be undertaken with a sense of commitment. The workers need to want to achieve the particular goal. So commitment also comes into a force when an employee has taken part in developing a goal. So if the employee is involved in the decision making which led to the development of the goal, then the employee will be more likely to try and achieve the goal because they themselves were instrumental in designing the task. So if if workers are involved in the decision making process and they come up with an idea to do something that they are more likely to to try to achieve that thing. They're, they're more likely to achieve that particular goal because they suggested it. They brought it up in the first place. So there'll be more commitment on their part. Generally speaking the more difficult a goal is, the more commitment and motivation is required. If a goal is very difficult to achieve, it's easy to put off people. They, they, they can try for a while and they find it too difficult. Uh, they fail a few times and they get demotivated. They, they, they lose commitment. They lose their application. So the more difficult a goal is, the more commitments required. And for that reason, difficult tasks need management intervention. The workers need to be encouraged and positive feedback and uh, they, need, they need to feel that the organizations behind them in trying to achieve this per very difficult task. Now let's move to feedback. Goals are effective if employees receive regular feedback. Generally speaking, according to this view, regular feedback from management about how tasks went and what, what went right and what went wrong and uh, praise where praise is due and so on. Feedback is important to try and achieve the goals. It allows the employee to review progress and clarify expectations and d discuss goal difficulties. So feedback is is a way in which the employer can um, foster good relationship with the employees. The, the management and the employees seem to be on the same side. They're trying to achieve the same objective. They're trying. They're trying to um, achieve the goal. And if the goal is difficult, there needs to be more involvement by management, more encouragement, and expectations about how long it will take to achieve the goal, and the issues that were encountered when trying to achieve the goal these should be clarified and discussed. Was it a realistic time scale? Uh, what problems manifest themselves that were not anticipated? And how were they dealt with? So in a sense it's it's adding to the corporate knowledge database. It's, it's adding to knowledge. The next time a similar goal is set expectations may be slightly different, progress might be different, there may be uh, allowance for contingencies, issues that may arise, uh, problems that were not anticipated and so on. So the feedback mechanism is very important. Feedback also increases an employee's motivation and determination to successfully, to successfully complete the goals. So the feedback is important it it helps the employee with motivation. 
uh, the employee feels that everyone's on the same side, everyone's behind them, uh, they're being watched in in a nice way, they're being watched so as to help them, they're, they're being watched so as to give them positive feedback, to make constructive comment, to help them. And the employee likes to be to be seen to be attempting something that's quite difficult and doing it for the organization, doing it for the employer. Next is complexity. Goals can, can become overwhelming at times and it's important that they are attainable. So when designing goals it's important that the employee can see the task and that the task is not unduly complex. If it's very complicated it may be off-putting for the employee. If it involves many parts and it involves uh, complexity in production or in, in delivery it's important that the employee feels that they can do it. It, it is achievable. So complexity needs to be handled very carefully by the employer. The aim of goal setting is to deliver success. Hence conditions attached to goals should not hinder employee accomplishment. So goals should be as straightforward as possible. They should not be complicated. They should be straightforward tasks that uh, the employee can see exactly what is required, they can see it from start and they can imagine what is required at the end and they will take it on because it is achievable. If it is extremely complex they may be put off, they may be confused or worried about taking it on or they may be too cautious and may not work efficiently, they may be constantly double checking themselves because of the complexity of the, the task. So the, the need adequate time to meet the goal. The need to make sure that the goal is achievable, that it's not unduly complex and the need the right time to achieve that goal. And to that end it's important that the employer recognizes the capacity of the employee and the conditions under which the employee is working. So involvement with the employee in discussing the task, in looking at the requirements of the task is important. So again the employee does not feel that they are being uh, coerced into working at speed with a task which they feel is big and complex because the employee may be worried about making mistakes and failing. Employees also need time to take uh, account of what the goal requirements are. So the employee needs to uh, work out before starting the task exactly what is required, what materials are required, what tools are required, what time resources required. Uh, it's important that the employee has a feel for the requirements and knows that the uh, requirements will be met by the organization and that they may then take on board the, uh, the task. Now the advantages of goal setting, well increased motivation as employees are working towards targets and deadlines so having a goal is good for motivation. The employees are aimed at achieving something. They have targets and deadlines and they're focused so that's good. Regular feedback improves employee performance and determination to succeed. And they also feel that they're a member of the team. They feel uh, that they are responsible members of the organization. They're taking on tasks and the management recognize them for taking on the tasks and the management are on their side. They understand the issues. So regular feedback is important. And they have a structure. They're, they're working towards a structure. They, they know what the resources required are to meet tasks, uh, to meet the goals. They, they know what the 
the time dimension is, the, the note of support that the organization can give, the know that there's help perhaps if something starts to go wrong they can ask for advice and uh, the, the advice will be given willingly and openly and it will not be um, destructive in the sense of hurting the person in, uh, with uh, bad comments or, or accusing the person of not applying him or herself it'll be constructive so everyone is feeling that they are working towards the achievement of the goal and the employee knows that the resources are there plus the help is there to achieve um, the goal. Now the disadvantages of goal setting can become difficult to set goals depending on employees ability and the goal complexity. Um, sometimes goals are complex sometimes it's not possible to make the goal simple the nature of the product, the nature of the company, the nature of the business is such that it is complex and it can't be simplified. So setting goals in that sense makes it difficult. It makes it difficult for the employees and the the operators who are going to take on the task for them to see clearly what is required of them and the time dimensions and the issues that could go wrong, the things that could go wrong. And of course, if it is complex, the employee's own ability may be challenged. Their ability to complete the task may be questioned. Perhaps the employees need more training. Uh, they need a support mechanism, uh, just in case, because of the greater complexity. Um, it can affect performance if employees lack the necessary skills and capabilities. Setting goals is okay, it's good because of the, the points we mentioned earlier, but if the employees don't have the skills then it can be um, counterproductive, it can lead to bad working relationships. People have been assigned goals and tasks that they cannot achieve because they don't have the skills or the capabilities. They perhaps need extra training or they need to be moved on to less challenging requirements or skills or tasks. So it's important that the, the workers have the necessary skills to take on the requirements. Now applications of goal setting theory, well it's commonly used in the workplace. Uh, it's so common that it's easy to not see it. Uh, in most companies that are making products, perhaps physical products, um, the product may pass through various phases and each phase will be a goal. We'll, we'll have a, a certain number of tasks that must be completed. So it's, it's commonly used. When the tasks are completed it moves on to the next process where it'll have more tasks to be completed and finally it becomes the product which gets sold in the marketplace. So it is quite a common approach to have goals. It's an assumption that goal setting improves performance and job satisfaction. We've made the point here that if workers know what the, the tasks are, know what's required of them, they will be more motivated and if they get positive feedback all the better but that may apply to the majority of workers, it may not apply to all. Some may still be uh, reticent to fully commit to take on tasks or may begrudgingly take on the task because they see it as a part of their employment, they want a salary at the end of the month or a wage at the end of the week and so they have to take on the task. They're not committed to it, they just do it because that's the job. So there is an assumption that goal setting improves the performance and job satisfaction. Managers can use goal setting as a means to communicate their expectations, their performance review um, and employee development. So it's, it's a way of measuring work to some extent. The tasks are set out as discrete tasks. Um, the management are able to communicate their expectations in terms of 
the quality of the work to be completed, the, the time span, the resources to be used. So their expectations can be set out and the workers then know what's required of them. If the workers fall short, there may be a case for employee development, perhaps extra training, or job rotation. Perhaps some employees don't like particular tasks and they can be moved away to do other tasks. So goal setting is important. It's important to understand how it is done in practice and what are the issues associated with it. Essentially it's seen as a motivation tool. Setting tasks that are achievable and supporting the workers to achieve those tasks is a way of motivating the employees. That's what I'm going to deal with in this session, so I'm going to leave it at that. Say thank you for watching.